Uh, well, that person was a wet noodle. Is that what you want to hire? A wet noodle? What do you expect from an RV inspector? What do you need from an RV inspector? And how are you going to find the right inspector for you? That's today's topic. So we wanted to bring this up because there's a couple of things to consider into the hiring of an inspector and try to demystify one to the other. So what are you looking for in an inspector? I'm looking for someone who's knowledgeable, that knows what they're doing and is trustworthy so that I know that when they give me my report, they've looked at everything. So actually, what she's looking for, I don't know about you, she's looking for somebody who actually has her back, working for her, defending her interests, not the dealership, not the seller, but her interests. I don't know about you, put your comments below. What are you looking for in an inspector? Just to go like Mr. Cluzo and just go in for the ride and see if something's gonna happen? I'm also looking for someone who's not gonna be quick and fast to just visually overlook a lot of the things that they could have seen had you been turning every leaf. A lot of people out there, I'm talking inspector-wise, I'm not gonna make any friends here and that's not my purpose either. From dealership to inspector, we have a lot of people that don't really appreciate what we do because we actually bring the fact to people who are looking for inspectors. Like Laurel just brought up, the point about just doing checkbox. Says, yes, I checked this without being able to verify or have the knowledge to verify the box that they just checked or visually inspect, meaning they leave it at that. It's just visually inspect. So I looked at the wall and from here it looked good. You had a wall. Yeah, you had you a had wall. You had a toilet. Here's you the had box. A shower. And, you... we're, and, <laughs> and we're not kidding. This is reality. I mean, if we were just making that up to glorify ourselves, we hear that from other people that actually had inspectors. People who actually came to us and told us that, well, I'm not hiring this person because just the feeling of talking with them, I will quote that person saying that, uh, well, that person was a wet noodle. Is that what you want to hire? A wet noodle? How to find the right inspector for you? This is a job in itself. You need to go to the nrvia.org website. You can put your zip code in there. Don't just leave it at a 50 mile radius. Guys, open this up to 250 miles. You have many inspectors in there that you can choose from. Call them, interview them, see how you feel about the way they work. Ask them, how long does it take you to do an inspection? How long does it take you, Pierre, to do an inspection? For me, time is not of the essence, meaning we'll bring our knowledge into a unit to verify every system components, touch the unit. Probably every square inch of your unit will have been touched once she went through it, once I went through it. Yes, we got our specialty. I'm more into the, the outside, the mechanical side, the, the structural side of it. Laurel is more into the cabinet, the furniture, the water system, the electrical system on the inside to see if it actually works. If there's an issue, she'll bring it back up to me and we will try to find the culprit of the issue, which is not supposed to be part of the inspection. You're right. It's just supposed to be we inspected it and that's how it is and it doesn't work. But that's the reason why you interview your inspector because some inspectors will say, I'm only going to inspect the points of inspection on our sheet. We go beyond that. We inspect a little bit more deeper together on your RV. So basically, you get what you paid for. So if somebody spends six, seven hours on your unit and half an hour later, they have the report delivered to you, I know you'll know after. That's the danger is you won't know until you hire somebody. That's the difference versus the amount they charge versus the time they spend on there and their knowledge. So if you've got no knowledge about the industry itself or about the mechanical side or about the structural side and you just check boxes, you could be done by noon. I personally know people who actually can do two inspections in a day. Two? Can you imagine? I mean, well, <laughs> they, they I can't. I can't imagine. Well, they can't either because they don't know. You're blind when you hire an inspector. You don't know who and what they are. You don't know what you don't know. And that's what Laura is saying. You've got to interview 
your people that you're going to tend to, you're going to do business with, you're going to create a relationship with. Listen, I've had people calling us and if you follow us and you're one of them, I'm sorry for you. But some of them people, we didn't connect and I'm fine with that. I, if I'm not going to connect with you, I'm working for you. So if I don't have a connection with you and it's just cold blunt and just go do the inspection, tell me how much you charge and thank you, bye. Yeah, but Pierre, you can be the juiciest peach in the world, but if someone doesn't like peaches, they're not going to like you. And by the way, they're only in Georgia, just saying. That's where they really grow them. So if you're not from Georgia, meaning if you don't like us, if you don't like me, if you don't like her. It's okay. That's the purpose of interviewing. You need to find the person that fits with you. And that's a gut feeling too. So when you start talking to them and you start building a connection with them, you're paying for a friendship. And this friendship is a dear friendship because they've got your back or they should have your back. So when you're interviewing them, you need to feel like this is your best friend that's going there to inspect your RV, has your back, your best interest at heart, and wants you to be safe out there on the road. So here's the elevator speech. Meaning, what am I looking for into an inspector? Make a connection. Try to see where they come from. Try to see if you connect with them, if you trust them. If they bring real, actual, constructive, criticism to what they do, if they're knowledgeable, if they're assertive. Because remember, and I'm going to bring this up because for me that's important. We work for you. We don't work for the dealership. I don't give a about the dealership. I'm not there for them. They don't like me and I understand that because we are a threat to them. And why we are a threat to them is because we create work for them. They didn't want to work on that unit. That was ready, it's been clean, it's been washed, they put shiny around the tires, and they will work when you get to pick up your unit and you say, this is wrong, this is wrong. Those are the things that you see. We go beyond that. I mean, we look at the structural part of it. We look at the twist and turn, just like we had an inspection yesterday that we got out, cut off short, because from one end of the Super C to the other end, you can see that something's been twisted big time because both slide out at both end of the unit used 2020. The unit is destroyed. So that's just physical. You didn't see it. You bought it, it looked nice, it looked shiny from the outside. That's what we do. We thrive to bring you the best. We are your best friend for those couple of days. And remember, cheap and quick does not equal quality. You get what you pay for. So make sure to ask those questions. This is not the bargain basement. You don't want a sale. You want someone who is structured, knows where they're going, and is confident in what they're doing. And for that, you might pay a little bit more than the cheap one, but you don't want a cheap, quick inspection. This is your life. This is your investment. Protect it. In conclusion, you are looking for someone who's honest, dependable, trustworthy, not quick. Someone who's going to have your back and protect your investment, your family. She doesn't mean slow when she says not quick. If somebody who doesn't care and just fill up a form that he got from the association and he's following the program. You got to remember here, people, there's a lot of different inspector using different program. We use different software to adapt to our knowledge, to our capacity, to our comfort zone. And you have the task to find out who's comfortable with their system that they're working and confident enough to say, yeah, I can trust my life and my investment in these people. Hopefully that helped. And hopefully you got a little bit more instruction, a little bit more education out of this little clip. We're there for you. If ever you need our help, that's what we train for. That's who and what we are. And hopefully you learn something out of this. So remember, and do never forget, it's not about the destination. It's, it's all, all about, about the, the journey. journey. So how are you going to find the right inspector for you? First of all, you can go to the nrvia.org, and he doesn't like what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm just kidding. How are you going to find an, an inspector? So okay, shit. I thought yeah, it no, is going to be I was going no, the that's wrong perfect. way. Okay, all right. So remember, and do never forget, it's, it's not, not about, about the destination.